Hi guys and welcome back to the Mighty Blues. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you all have had a fantastic weekend. It is Monday morning. I hope you all have a fantastic week ahead. Whatever you've got planned, whether you're working, whether you've got a week off, whether you're going on holiday, whatever you've got planned, I hope you all have a fantastic, fantastic week. Thought we'd sit down again and do another news video. Uh, I think the last video we did was actually in the car as well. I'm remote again. I'm away from my usual setup but i didn't want to wait i didn't want to allow you know a load of news and information to just pile on top of each other uh, and then try and cover it all in one video when i get home i thought you know what i like these sort of 10 15 minute videos we do uh, in the car and i thought why not do another one so let's get straight into it we're going to talk about some potential exits away from everton football club as well as some potential um incoming uh, deals regarding players and um potential new members of the board or of the senior footballing uh, people at the football club um so without further ado let's get straight into it damari gray made his jamaican debut the other night in their one all draw against the u.s men's national team he registered an assist for himself very similar to the assist that he got for dominic calvert lewin's winning goal against crystal palace towards the back end of the season before last lovely free kick into a dangerous area and a headed goal for Jamaican and it seems like on the back of that performance of course it was his debut uh, an impressive debut by all accounts I didn't watch the game myself but as I said I've seen the assist and I've seen a couple of highlights and it seemed like he made an impression and off the back of that we read reports on uh, Sunday morning that uh, Saudi Arabian side Al Halal are interested in signing Damari Gray they are set to send a delegation uh, to London to have talks with Everton three Premier League sides are also interested in Gray. Alan Myers who of course works for Sky used to work very closely at Everton Football Club as well he then reported it looks likely that the Marty Gray will leave Everton this summer Al Halal have put in what has been described as a good offer three other teams are interested so we know from previous reports that um Fulham are supposedly interested in Damari Gray and Marco Silva is interested in bringing him to the London Football Club. However, as I said, the latest of this is coming from Saudi Arabia. We have heard reports over the last day or so that there has been an offer with, or certainly Everton have a valuation of Damari Gray worth around £35 million. There's been various different reports on the internet that there's been a bid of £25 million plus £10 million in add-ons, £35 five million plus a couple of million in add-ons ultimately at the end of the day we don't know anything for sure at this moment other than there is incest there and al halal clearly are um you know, are, are, are wanting to bring Damari Gray to the football club and have gone as, 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 as far as sending a team over to the UK to have talks with Everton over that. Now, listen, I've steered well away from the conversation surrounding what's going on at the moment in football surrounding you know Saudi Arabian sides and uh, people like Ruben Neves going to Saudi Arabia for 50 odd million pounds with one year left on his contract people like N'Golo Kante going there over there for hundreds of millions of pounds I think Kula Bali's just gone over there today not 100 million pounds transfer fee I'm talking wages I think Kula Bali's gone I think Chelsea are going to end up selling something like 100 150 odd million pounds worth of players to Saudi Arabia and there's obviously discussions there around potential investment in Chelsea and, and how that might be a way for Chelsea to get around the rules in terms of selling to Saudi Arabian sides but the sides they're selling to are actually owned by the same people that own Chelsea themselves again I've stayed well away from it for a couple of reasons one because I don't think it's it, it can be avoided I think this is unavoidable now I think the money that they have over there the funds that they have to their to their um you know um exposure the 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 the, the clear embarrassments of riches that they have over there is naturally going to be a massive massive selling point to any professional footballer that is looking for a change in their career regardless of whether you are 35 coming towards the end of your career like maybe Cristiano Ronaldo or whether you are in your mid-20s and, and and just want a big payday we've said seen this before we've seen it with China when Oscar went over there at what would be described as the peak of his career and a couple of other players went over there and I think I've said on this channel before that there's a genuine misconception that 
all football players absolutely love playing football and they live to play football and their biggest dream in the world is to play football that isn't the case there is a lot of football players that simply play football because they are really really good at it and it makes them a lot of money and they're good enough to be a professional there will be a lot of Premier League players as well and, and various other players across the world that don't actually really enjoy playing football, they don't really enjoy training, they don't really enjoy matches, they don't really enjoy it and that's why you see a lot of players, you know, careers fade away and we spoke about Delhi a couple of weeks ago and how he doesn't seem like he enjoys it anymore, Jesse Lingard's another player that's been mentioned in that conversation and that's because some players just genuinely don't like it, they just do it because they're good at it and it makes them money and if you're one of them players and you're genuinely not that bothered about playing at the highest level or ambition to play in the Champions League or win a World Cup or whatever it may be, and you get an offer from a Saudi Arabian side for 15, 20 million quid a year, and you're sitting there thinking, well, I'm not that arsed about playing in the Champions League, I'm not that arsed about playing in the Premier League, but what I am asked about is earning enough money that will make sure that my grandchildren's grandchildren's grandchildren are secure for the rest of their lives and the rest of everybody else's lives. So I'll go and do that. So again, as I said, I've steered away from the conversation because A, I think it's unavoidable. And B, I think there's a lot being said at the moment that, you know, I don't think a lot of people know exactly what's going on, but there's a lot being said about it. Um, and also because I didn't want to be in a position where I'm sat here, you know, saying, oh, it's a disgrace, players are going here, there's too much money, it's a cheat, you know, Chelsea are owned by Saudi Arabia, Newcastle are owned, and there's talks of Ruben Neves getting loaned back to Newcastle, because I had a feeling one day that, well, this conversation, I might sit here on the channel and scream and shout about how disgraceful it is, but then if a Saudi Arabian side comes in for an Everton player for... 50 million quid and Everton are desperate for the money am I really going to sit here and go no we shouldn't sell because this is ruining football and this is a disgrace this that and the other no realistically I'm going to sit here and say absolutely sell absolutely and, and that is the position that we're sort of in now now obviously the talk about 35 million pounds and Everton's valuation of the Marley Gray and all of that could just be you know paper talk at the moment but the reality is if Al Halal are genuinely interested in the Marley Gray they have got an embarrassment of riches. They have got an unbelievable amount of money to spend. And if they want to spend 30 million quid, which effectively, and I'm not saying they will, by the way, but effectively is buttons to them and, and to the finances that they have at their disposal on Damari Gray, then I would absolutely take that. This is a player that cost Everton £1.5 million. Pounds. And yes, he's been one of our outstanding performers over the last couple of years. But I still don't think he's particularly good enough. I still don't think he's particularly at that level that we need to guarantee Everton, you know, Premier League survival and, and a decent mid-table Premier League season. He's one of our better players, of course he is. But if you would have said to any Evertonian a week ago before any of this incest was 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 out there or before there, it seemingly, you know, there was any of it, would you take £35 million for the Marty Gray? Every single Evertonian would have snatched your hand off for it and gone, who is... Who is paying that? And look, again, we could be in a situation where he goes to Al Halal for 10 million because, you know, they're not stupid over there. I know they've got a ridiculous amount of money, but they're not idiots. They're not going to look and overpay for the sake of it. But even 10 million quid for a player that cost us 1.5 million, it allows us to reinvest that. I will, you know, again, it wouldn't be the end of the world, but some of the figures that are getting thrown about, which are also realistic because of how much money they have over there and how much money they're willing to spend on Premier League players. Ruben Neves went for a ridiculous amount of money considering his contractual situation and considering actually he's not... He's a good player. He's probably a top six player. He's not one of the best players in the league and he went for stupid money. So, for me... This is a no-brainer. If a bid comes in and there's genuine interest and, and a deal can be done, it's an absolute no-brainer. No problem with the Marty Gray. You know, listen, ultimately it's down to him. If he wants to go there, he'll make a sickening amount of money. And realistically, at his point in his career, he should probably be looking at it thinking, am I likely to get a Champions League club? Probably not. Am I likely to play European football? I think he's only likely to play European football if he stays at Everton. And Everton jump massively over the next couple of seasons. So, to go to Saudi Arabia and earn life-changing amounts of money. Why would he not want to do that? And for us as, 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 as a club, we'd be stupid to not sell. We'd be absolutely stupid to not sell if 
those figures are, are, are to be believed. And as I said, we're, we're obviously a long way away from that that being the case. But we'll wait and see how that one progresses over the course of the um, of the coming days and, and weeks. But he is a, a Premier League player. He scores goals in the Premier League, so there's a price for that. And Everton should, you know, should um, should make that clear as well that there's 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 a price for for Premier League players that score. Five, what's he got? Five goals in the Premier League last season. How many did Ruben Neves score? So there you go, there you go. I'm not saying he's a better player than Ruben Neves, by the way. I'm just using it as a comparison tool. So interesting, anyway. We'll see how that one progresses over the next couple of weeks or so. But uh, it, it certainly is interesting that um, Damari Gray is 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 clearly being targeted by um, by by Saudi Arabian sides. And you know, again, this is why I didn't really you know involve myself much in the conversation because you know. Again, would any would any of us turn down forty million for Damari Gray, regardless of where it was coming from? I don't think we would. I have just opened the door for a second. It's because it is absolutely scorching in this car, and I am sweating my you know what off. So I've had to open the door, but I ain't going. So don't worry. Um, the Mail reported earlier on today that Everton are considering a move to bring former Arsenal head of football Raul Sanielli to the club. The Spaniard left Arsenal in 2020 and is currently at Real Zaragoza. Um, this is, <clears throat> for me, a move that would be absolutely horrific for Everton Football Club. Um, somebody that has got heavy links with Kia Joraban uh, and other sort of uh, super agents and, 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 and super, you know, people around football that are bad news for your football club. We all know the impact that Kia Joraban has had on Everton in the past. We all know how Kia Joraban works. He isn't interested about Everton. He isn't interested about improving Everton. He isn't interested in Everton getting better. He's interested in lining his pockets with money and doing the best deals that line his pockets with money. And that, if that means Everton sell one of their better players to make him richer, then he will do that. We do know the links that Kia Joraban has with Farhad Mashiri. Clearly, they have got a close relationship. And I think bringing in <clears throat> another one of them, you know, sort of... Um, comrades of, of of them two people would just of of, of Mishiri and Kia would just be disastrous. It would be absolutely disastrous to bring in another one of their friends, um, because ultimately, again, it, it it would not fix the issues. It would not solve the problems. It would not make us a, a better football club. It would not, um, you know, it it would not see us run better than what we are now. It would just be another example of an absolutely horrific, horrific appointment. Because ultimately, all as it would be was another one of Kia and Farad's mates coming in, who whose best interest was elsewhere, you know, and, and not an Everton football club, and, and that for me would be a, a disaster. It's got Farad Mashiri written all over it because again, he's somebody that Farad Mashiri will have known from his time at Arsenal and from his relationship with Kia Jordan, and that's all Farad Mashiri does, isn't it? He doesn't go for the best people in the industry. He doesn't go for people with proven track records. He just goes for people that he knows, um, regardless of whether those people are good enough to do what we need them to do regardless of whether those people have got Everton's best interests at heart he isn't bothered he just goes for the people that he knows and yeah again I think from what I've read and from what I've seen about this fella and, and his time at Arsenal and you know I just don't think it would be a, a good move for Everton in the slightest um, but again that was coming from the mail and, and it might only be a, a, a report at the moment ultimately we um we don't know. We don't know. But again, I don't think it's something that would go down well with fans. And considering he was a head of football at Arsenal, what would that mean for Kevin Thelwell's Everton career? You know, bringing in somebody that clearly has had a ridiculous amount of influence at one of the biggest clubs in England, one of the biggest clubs in the world. Would he work under Kevin Thelwell? No. Would he undermine Kevin Thelwell? Probably. So what would that mean for Kevin Thelwell? Yeah, I just think it would be an absolute disaster. I think it will be a disaster. Anyway, moving on, according to Tuko, Tuto Makato Webb, Everton are working on a deal to sign Leeds United striker Rodrigo this summer. I think he scored something like 15 Premier League goals last season. He is of an age that would be concerning in the short term, maybe a good deal. Um, but certainly in the long term, he would be somebody that we would have to replace fairly quickly. Um, again, the Leeds link continues doesn't it Everton seemingly uh, are just now being linked with every single Leeds player under the sun uh, a little bit like it was with Burnley last season um, can I see this one happening apparently he's only got a release cause of three million quid now again in a 
in an ideal world, Everton would be looking at three million quid and thinking that's absolutely nothing. Uh, but we're not in an ideal world and three million quid at the moment is quite a considerable amount of money considering our financial situation. So probably would be a little bit of a risk. Uh, but again, could just be a, a lazy link with absolutely nothing in it. And then finally, according to TalkSport, Sheffield United are in advanced talks uh, to sign Mason Holgate on loan from Everton. The Blues wish to trim their wage bill for new signings and Holgate has been told he can leave. I believe Nottingham Forest are also interested in Mason Holgate as well. Absolutely no problem with this one. Uh, preferably, if we could sell him, then that would be even better because, again, I just don't see what what the point of loaning him out is um you know if nobody's interested in buying him on a permanent then fine loan him out get rid of the wages and then you know ultimately make the decision again next summer i feel like we would only get a couple of million for mason allgate i think what's more likely is he gets loaned out he comes back i'm not sure when his contract expires but i'm pretty certain he won't be given another one uh, and then he probably will leave on a free whenever that is but if we can get a couple of million quid from him if he goes to sheffield united uh who you know again will we'll definitely be interested in him because he's a premier league experienced player and, and they're just coming into the premier league and we'll want as many of them as possible and if he maybe does a good job there then maybe you might get a few million out of him at the end of next season but uh yeah no problem with Mason Holgate going. He's got no future in Everton. He's not good enough to be here. Um, there's an argument of should we be strengthening the sides that may or may not be around us next season. But the hope is that we'll be far away from that relegation battle. And, you know, ultimately, I don't think we can look at it and go, well, we won't give to them because they might be fighting for relegation with us next season because that's a bit of a, a negative attitude to have. But, yeah, there you go. That is the latest Everton news and rumours, let us know your thoughts on everything that we've spoken about. Would you be happy to see the back of Damari Gray? Would you be happy to sell him to Saudi Arabian side Al Halal? Are you particularly bothered about Mason Holgate leaving the football club? And are you worried about Everton being linked with uh, somebody that has got clear links to Kia Joraban uh, and yet yeah, didn't seemingly do a great job at Arsenal? Let us know your thoughts on all that in the comment section down below. Massive, massive thank you for watching. If you have enjoyed it, please do leave a like, subscribe if you're new. We'll be back over the next couple of days. Up the toffees. See you later.